Hey, good morning, friends, members of the pit crew. It's Rob. This is uh, Big Rob's van. As you can see, it's a little bit of a mess. This morning, it is, uh, oh, I think around 9 in the morning, and we just got back last night from a 2,000-mile round-trip road trip in Big Rob's van. We left Oklahoma City on Wednesday, and we drove to Hurricane West Virginia, which is uh, near Charleston, about 20 miles away, I guess, from Charleston. And uh, I drove up there to attend a retro computer event called Boat Fest. So uh, some of my friends that I've known for many years put on an annual gathering of four retro computer enthusiasts. So all these guys that are my age, mostly in their 40s and 50s and 60s, who grew up with super old school computers. We're talking old Atari computers, Commodore 64s, um, lots of uh, stuff that's older older than that. And everybody brings them and, and they, everybody shows things off. And, and uh, it's a real fun time. You get to talk to all these guys. Um, I consider myself to be a relatively intelligent person and there's no feeling like walking into a room with 40 people and feeling like you're the dumbest guy there <laughs> everybody there is super smart and everybody is super friendly and uh and super approachable so it's a real fun time so um you know i have camped in my van many times and i have gone on many uh local excursions you've seen some of the videos i went and camped near big jim the dinosaur I drove to El Reno, which is a town uh, nearby here, and I camped at the casino. But to be honest with you, most of those trips uh, were within, you know, a half hour drive. And so this was 2,000 miles. This was the first time I've taken the van on any length of time uh, or any distance like that. I mean, going from 20 or 30 miles to 2,000 miles was quite a hop and I learned a lot about van life and I learned a lot about uh, uh, this particular van. So I want to talk a little bit about um, what went right and what went wrong and, uh, and some things that I learned. So uh, let's talk about what went right. Well, first of all, the van uh, more or less handled uh, like a dream, you know. I, in that last video, boy, I really was suffering from sticker shock on that repair, and a lot of you guys said that that's just a normal part of vehicle maintenance, and it seems like maybe the brakes and the brake system had possibly been neglected by the former owner, or maybe it was just time, you know, to do that stuff. It is a 15-year-old van, um, so a 17-year-old van. So um you know it hurts man those repair bills hurt when they hit you uh, right before a trip and you get this big big giant sum and one of the things that a lot of you people mentioned was that as a because uh, i'm a computer guy i'm an it guy i'm a uh old school you know programmer and, and guy and and a lot of you said you know if i can learn that i can learn car repair and uh there are some repairs that need to be done on the van so, uh, you know, that's going to be my next step into owning the van and owning the vehicle is there's some things that broke during this trip that need repairing. And uh, there's some things that I didn't have time to repair before we left. And those are uh, going to go on my list. So that's all, all stuff that uh, I'm going to try to do myself. So uh, I appreciate everybody who, who gave me that uh, suggestion because I think you're right. Like, I don't think it's, it's beyond my scope. It's just beyond my, my current experience uh, level. But, but I'm going to try uh, to pick some of that up in the future. So the van more or less went right. I mean, we drove there. We didn't have any major mechanical issues. Uh, the engine handled just fine. Uh, transmission, the brakes that we had done, all that stuff, you know, along with that brake job, they replaced the spark plugs. They checked all the, the uh, uh, fuel levels and, uh, or fluid levels. And I checked all that stuff this morning and everything is, is still good. So, you know, I'm not leaking oil, burning oil, any of that stuff. So the van went fine, that went good. Um, what's something else that went good? More, yeah, I would say that something that went good 
was solar. Now I haven't done a video on the solar system yet and that's because the solar system is the most basic elementary solar setup in the history of van life. Uh, but I, I got that done a day before we left and I will be doing a video about that but I put a uh, 200 watt solar panel on the roof of the van and best case scenario the most that i ever saw was about 130 watts in i didn't get any more than that so uh, i know that it's not ideal uh, ideally you want to put solar at a 45 degree angle and you want to point it a certain direction and and the the sun conditions have to be right the weather conditions have to be right and obviously if you put a solar panel flat on top of your van and you drive around the country uh, all those variables go out the window. And so that, that definitely affected uh, the numbers that I got. There were times where when we were driving and it was overcast, I was getting five watts in, uh, like, like almost nothing. But on sunny days and even while driving, I got 120, I got about, almost 130 watts. So let's call it 130 watts, which is two thirds of the capacity of a 200 watt solar panel. And there's no, uh, I mean, I'm not losing anything. I mean, it's a brand new solar panels, brand new wiring, brand new battery system. So I won't say that that's best case scenario, but that was the best that I saw on the trip. That being said, uh, and this ties into another thing that went well was the refrigerator, which you can see uh, right here. And every time I touch it, it beeps. Um, if you use the app, you can lock out these controls. So even though they beep, they're not changing anything. So that, that's a nice feature. That's one, one reason to use the Bluetooth app if you have it on these refrigerators. But the refrigerator worked great. We loaded it up with food. We loaded it up with drinks. It's still full of drinks. That's why I've got a cold drink here this morning. And the refrigerator constantly, um, it's a dual zone. So it can't be freezer or fridge. I had both sides set to fridge. I set both sides at 45 degrees and it drew 35 watts constantly. Never changed, eh, 33, 30, you know, but, but basically 35 watts. So as I watched the battery, you know, in the, in the best of times when the sun was out, I had 130 watts coming in and 35 watts going out for that. So a lot of the time, my new battery that I bought, the All Powers battery, I bought an All Powers R2500 battery when it was on sale. They didn't give it to me and I don't have a discount code. I just bought it. For the most part, that all worked really well. I, I kind of had like a net sum zero, you know what I mean? Like I was staying at 100% and then at night I could run my CPAP off the battery. I could run my Max Air fan off the battery. It would go down to, you know, 85% total or whatever. And then the next day, uh, the fridge, you know, was the only thing on there and it would slowly build back up to 100%. So that all basically worked. I'll also say for the most part, um, the desk that I built worked. It needed some modifications. The, this storage thing that I built worked. It needed some, uh, it had some, uh, some minor failures and the bed worked, but it needed some modifications. So overall, I mean, everything held together like it didn't fall apart, you know? So everything that all worked. All right, let's get to <laughs> the bad side. What went wrong? And ultimately, after 2,000 miles in the van, why I'm not wearing my wedding ring. So let's talk about, first of all, what went wrong. First of all, the bed had a design flaw. Now, if you watch the video on me making the bed, I mean, when I say this is a bed, really what it is is a big flat bench with mattresses on top of it. I used more or less the exact same design, I mean, the same dimensions as the old one. The old one was a slide out bed. I never slid it out. So on this one, I set uh, just a normal bench with mattresses on it. And the first night that we camped, I noticed that as I was laying down to sleep, I began sliding out of the bed. I was laying on my back and I began sliding out of the bed. So I rolled over on one side and I began sliding out of the bed. And then I rolled over again and I began sliding out. And the next morning, my wife asked me how I slept. And I said, well, I dreamed that I was a hot dog on a rotisserie all night long. So other than that, I slept okay. But 
What I did not notice is that even though I used the same dimensions, I upgraded the wood on this. I wanted it to be much more sturdy than the old one. I never wanted to worry about it breaking. And so for the long runs, the support beams, instead of using two by twos, which is what I used last time, I used two by fours. Well, what I didn't take into consideration is that on its side, a two by four is three and a half inches uh, long, where a two by two is, is um, I think there, there actually are two inches, maybe they're an inch and a half or an inch and three quarters. I think regardless, the two by four was wider. And so because I use the same dimensions, what happened is the back side of the bed is not, the bed's not level. The back side of the bed is sitting on top of the wheel well. I didn't notice that when I put the bed in. I even sat on the bed. It looks great. But when I was laying on the bed, that's when I noticed that slope. The long-term solution will be to cut a notch out of that two by four so that it sits over the wheel well. But what we did in a pinch was we went to Home Depot on the road. We stopped at the Home Depot in Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky. I bought a two by four. We went back to the wood cutting section and had it cut in two, uh, two 30 inch pieces and we threw the third piece away and we stuck those underneath the bed to lift it up an inch and a half, which clears the wheel well. Now the problem with that became as we were driving around twisty winding roads in Kentucky is that the bed began sliding around, it slid off those two by fours. So once I was actually parked for the night where we were gonna stay, uh, we put the two by fours back under the bed. For the most part that worked. So there's a slight change that needs to happen uh, to the bed, but you know, uh, one of the things is, uh, you know, that I learned is that you just got to adapt. You just got to fix stuff. You just got to deal with problems and problems come up all the time. <laughs> it's just constant uh, barrage of problems and solutions that have to be done. It's not like your house where you're bored and you say, what am I going to do? I mean, what am I going to do is fix things that are breaking the whole way. Uh, another thing that broke, um, which I was able to fix, my wife helped me fix this this morning, was on the back door of the van, there's a, I don't know what this piece is called, but there's a piece of metal that when you open the door, it keeps it from keep opening all the way. And I noticed once we got in, um, uh, got to where we were going, uh, the first day when I went to close the door, there was, it was almost like it was uh, in a bind, but it did finally close. But then every day after that, I realized that the door was just slinging wide open and just flopping around. And not, I mean, when I would open it, not all the time, but when I would open it and it wasn't stopping like where it normally stops. So I didn't know what that piece was called. And when I was looking on Amazon this morning, uh, I think I found it's like a 25 or $30 part. But as we were looking at the door, uh, it looks like that piece just goes over and fits over. It was, it had fallen into the door. I pulled it out and I re-snapped it together and it's fixed. So uh, it seems like there should be something a little bit more permanent to hold that thing in place, but right now uh, that's fixed. Um, something else that went wrong, uh, and this happened right before I left, was the sink. So my wife um, wanted a sink. We had bought a five gallon uh, container for water, which we filled up before we left. I wanted to build one of those simple, uh, you know, plastic bowl or bowl, metal bowl sinks where you drill a hole, you put a drain in, you drain it into something. And literally the day before we left, I started on that project and I had everything, I got it all done. That's this storage thing here behind me. Now, uh, if you remember the old, the old van, I had the, or the old van, the old, uh, van <laughs> alpha or beta version. I had that giant storage uh, shelves here, which gave me a lot of storage. Well, I had to take all that out to put this in. So I have storage for these little tiny plastic tubs on top, but I lost a lot of storage to be able to put water in here. Everything is give or take. You know, you, if you take something out, you gotta, you know, you wanna put something in, you gotta take something out. And I got one of those little USB water pumps. And so when it was all said and done, when I hooked up the water pump, the water pump is not strong enough for some reason to pump the water up that high. I mean, it's not that high. I don't understand what the problem is. It's like a foot and a half, two foot above where the water jug is. And when you turn on, you can see the water go up about six inches below where the pump is and the water just stays there no matter how long you leave the pump on. I even had the, I thought maybe that the pump wasn't charged enough. So I hooked the pump directly up to a USB thing. It didn't matter. It never, it won't pump the water up there. So not only did I lose all this storage space that I had before, but we weren't able to use the water at all. So I'm hauling around 
uh, I mean, basically 40 pounds of water in this thing. I got a little gray water reservoir under there, the sink. I mean, I did this whole thing and it didn't work. So, and I knew it didn't work before we left. Like I, and I had to go with it, you know? So, so I lost all that storage space, um, and knew that it didn't work. So that was, that was a real bummer. Also, Another thing that went wrong was uh, there's a there's a problem with the air conditioner. Now I've already researched this on YouTube this morning. It looks like it's not that hard of a fix, but as we were getting in the hills and going over all these bridges through Kentucky and, and um, Southern Illinois and all these places that we drove through, uh, a couple of times the air conditioner cut out, and I thought, oh man, another I got another wiring issue or something, you know. Uh, but when I did some searching, it looks like it's a problem with, uh, it's losing, uh, vacuum, it's vacuum power. Is that the right way to say that? I don't know. But, um, uh, you know, I saw these articles that said it's, uh, $50 worth of parts, but $2,000 worth of labor, which, you know, story of my life. But I watched a video where a guy said, you don't have to tear down into the whole engine and all this stuff. You can um, just relocate that part and run the hoses through. So that's going to be a project. That's one of the projects I'm talking about that I uh, plan to tackle myself, you know? So, uh, so let's get to the, the last thing on the list, which is why after six days of being in the van, uh, am I not wearing my wedding ring this morning? And the reason is because my hands are not only beat up, but they are completely swollen <laughs> from being uh, in this van. You know, something that you, you can talk about and you can watch on YouTube and, and all these things that seem like you, you know what it's gonna be like, but you don't know what it's gonna be like until you try it, I promise you. Uh, I mean, if you wanna, like, if, if I were to say this morning, like, hey, I want you to imagine in your house, if you're sitting at home, uh, you know, to go put your shoes on. And you would just say, well, I'll get my shoes on. I sit down and put my shoes on. But in here, like my shoes, I had put them in a, I stuck them in a container or in a, a, a little crawl space area that was behind a tub, that was behind a microwave. I had to move all these things down. Now you have all these things on the floor and there's no room to put your shoes on. So you gotta move all these things back. People describe it as a constant never ending game of Tetris, but Tetris is fun. <laughs> this is not, the way I did this wasn't fun. So it was just this constant shuffling. When I redo things, and I'm sure I'll redo my van again and again and again, and I, I understand why people say that their van life designs are never done. But when I do it again, I'll, I'll, I wanna keep as much storage as I have, because I have quite a bit of storage, but you gotta make it all accessible. Storage that you can't get to is, you know, think about it like your attic in your house. <clears throat> like, you know, you're, you're, um, you put your Christmas tree maybe up in the attic or maybe down your basement crawl space, something like that, but someplace where it's not easily accessible because in the middle of May, you don't need to get to it, right? You only need to get to it during the Christmas season. But in the van, you need to get to all this stuff all the time. So that long-term storage isn't really that, that useful. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna take a Christmas tree. I'm not gonna take something in this van that I'm not gonna need for seven months. The reason this van is so full right now is because my wife wanted to camp, uh, she wanted to do tent camping where we went uh, We went to a, uh, um, a national park one night and I'll have a video coming out about that very soon. But so, you know, so we had the van and I had all the van life stuff ready to go. I had my bed, I had my table, I had the storage of the water and all this. And then we filled it with everything else. We filled it with a tent and camping chairs and all, and that, all that stuff went into all the free space, the space in between my bed and the table. Stuff went on the bed, stuff went on the table, stuff went everywhere. And I'm still unloading stuff this morning, but that made everything inaccessible while we were driving. You couldn't get to anything. So, um, you know, that, that dream of like being in an RV and hey, I'm gonna go take a nap while someone else drives. Like there's no going anywhere. We had to sit in the seats the whole time. We, there was nowhere to go back here. We could barely get to the fridge. So, you know, just bringing all that stuff made it difficult. And then, like I said, just, you know, I told my wife, I said, if you wanna experience what van life is like, I said, you know, like get in the smallest metal box you can think of or a small box and then put all your stuff where you can't reach it and then 
or under or behind other stuff and then try to get it. And then the whole time you're trying to do it, keep hitting your head on a piece of metal. <laughs> That's what fan life was like. My shins are all busted up from kicking this table, from walking into stuff. My hands, I mean, they're just swollen and they hurt from just grabbing stuff and tying stuff and moving stuff. And, and um, you know, and, and the other part is uh, being in the van, you know, if you're on a regular road trip, like if you're just in a car, you know, and, and you go and then you say, hey, I need to get gas, and you stop and you get out and you walk and you do all this, or, you know, you get to your hotel and you go, all right, let's get out, we'll walk upstairs. When you're in the vehicle and you're not leaving the vehicle, you know, I think you get like, like, I think I, like I'm, this sounds weird, but like I'm retaining water, like I feel bloated, you know, like we didn't eat particularly bad on the trip, you know, like we didn't eat a bunch of junk, but, um, uh, I mean, we ate some junk, but, uh, just, you know, you're not getting that, that movement, uh, you're getting short movement, moving around, shuffling around in here, but not the big stuff. So anyway, um. You know, so some stuff went wrong, some stuff went right, uh, but overall, this is what I would say. It was a pain in the butt. Sometimes it was uncomfortable. Sometimes it was uh, frustrating. Sometimes it was maddening. Sometimes it was exhausting. And I had the best time ever. <laughs> I mean, you either like doing this or you don't like doing it, you know? So, uh, I had some people right before we left because of my previous video that bought us a coffee, and I'm going to tell you, we drank every single one of those. So, thank you uh, to all you guys, Dave from Canada and the Traveling Tailors. Uh, those, the, the buy me a coffee went to uh, a great use. So if you're on, uh, my Patreon, I've got some pictures from the trip that I've been posting and some notes. Uh, I'll be making some videos, uh, later this week about the trip, some different places that we stopped and different things that we saw. Uh, and, and, uh, also some of the things that I built for the van and uh, there's always accompanying articles for those videos. If you like reading articles about stuff, I always have articles on bigrobsvan.com that you could go look at. And um, of course, you know, the YouTube stuff and Instagram. Now I turn into a plug show. I wasn't gonna do that, but uh, I will tell you one final thing is that um, last week or right before we left, I got my stickers in. I don't know if there's any stickers here that I could reach, but. Uh, but I got Big Rob's van stickers in. I've got to mail those out. Everybody that's uh, all my patrons are gonna receive one of those this week now that we're back home and I can mail stuff. Uh, so if you're on my patron, no matter what your uh, um, tier level is, I'll be sending out some of those stickers. But I gotta tell you, at the computer festival, there was so much interest in the van and people wanted to come out and they wanted to see it. Unfortunately, when uh, most people came to see it, we had all the, the stuff in here, you know, we had the, uh, the tent and the, and the camping chairs and there was no, and I think people thought that I just looked like a, a you know, a bum <laughs> living in this area that you can't even access. So maybe in the near future I'll do finally, now that I've got, I, like I would call this van build 1.0. Uh, if you ever get to 1.0, I don't know, but, um, uh, I'll do like a proper van tour and show everything off. So, uh, but here's the final success. I mean, it, like I said, I've got a lot of empty it out of stuff to do. Um, but uh, the final success is that, the, like, I'm, I did it. Not just that the van made it, but that I did it. Like, I slept in this van last week, Wednesday night. Like, I've never slept in the van two nights in a row before. <laughs> and I slept in the van Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday. So five days in a row, I slept in the van uh, and... You know, the essential stuff, it all worked. I'm gonna go uh, soak in the bathtub with some bath salts and try to get my hands, uh, the swelling and the pain to go down a little bit so uh, I can put my wedding ring back on. And uh, while I'm running that bath water, I'll probably take a load of this stuff in. So, hey, thanks everybody for watching these videos. I'm gonna have videos about some of the places that we camped, places that we went, things that we went and saw coming up uh, here in just a few days. So thanks for watching. And um, uh, please, please, please click like, or please, please, please subscribe. Uh, once I get a thousand subscribers, 
I will be giving away uh, something. Stickers. A battery that doesn't work. Parts of the van that fell off along the way. He's gonna have that, I don't know. What do you want? What do you want from me? Free Dr. Pepper, free Diet Dr. Pepper. Like and subscribe, I'll give you free Diet Dr. Pepper. I don't know.